Hey guys, what is up? So I'm back with another system design video because I got really good response for the first Web3 system design video, which was about the Metaverse game engine. And this one is about uh, an NFT marketplace. Now you might realize that I said distributed NFT marketplace and not decentralized NFT marketplace. And I've done this because 99% of the uh, marketplaces for NFTs right now on the market are not decentralized, they are distributed, okay? Uh, and that's true, by the way, in case you didn't know that. I mean, a lot of people already know this, but I'm just clarifying this in case you didn't know that, that uh, NFT marketplaces, most of them are not decentralized, they're still distributed, okay? Distributed in the sense, they still have a single owner, yeah, but the system is very robust in the sense uh, there are multiple nodes and if one node goes down, if there's a failure in one node, it can be brought back up again, but the owner, is that one particular company. There are some new and NFT marketplaces coming up that are going to be DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations, but mostly right now they're um, one marketplace is owned by one particular company. Okay, so uh, before I do this, I just wanna tell you that we're going to be doing this system design video in about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, and that's a very less amount of time for a system design video or a system design problem, okay? now. Uh, system design problems ideally should be given three hours according to me uh, in interviews you would be given 45 hours or 45 minutes and you ideally you, you take about three hours if it's a real world system design problem and this is how you solve it and the actual system design ends up looking like something like this so this this comes after the result of about three hours of time investment this is what you get uh, okay and this is the kind of sessions I take with scalar many times for system design uh, where I teach um, on, on weekends, I teach uh, system design for it's, it's usually a three hours master class. And this is the kind of process that you follow, right? So we're not doing that. We're just going through a very quick 15 minute uh, you know, NFT marketplace system design video. So just want to clarify that, right? So that we won't have a lot of details, but we'll cover the most important parts that we can cover in 15 minutes. So, uh, the two things that you want to do ideally before getting started, right, which I haven't done because this is a small video, but um, you should do this before you get started with any system design is that you think about the user flow. So even if, if I'm not drawing the user flow for you, I'm just going to tell you about it, that the user goes there. There are two things the user can do. He can browse through the collections and through the artists of and, and then the, the uh, actual NFTs or he can simply create and upload his own NFT. So there are two user flows that can happen. And uh, that's that's mostly what we'll be thinking about right now. Now there are there's a separate section called invisible flows, which are the things that happen at the background like monitoring and caching and uh, you know, uh, like um, what do you call it? Uh, data pipelining, all of that. So we're not talking about that because that'll take a lot more time. Uh, then the second thing you want to do is estimations in the sense how many users are going to be using your platform per month, per day, concurrent users, how many files are going to be transacted, how many, trans sorry, how many transactions are going to happen and how many files are going to be uploaded, uh, how many artists will be there, how many users, total users will be there, I've already said that. So those are the estimations you want to consider before you start doing system design. So we've talked about these, we haven't drawn these, uh, but for a proper, proper problem, system design problem, you ideally want to do that. Anyhow, so a distributed NFT marketplace. What should it have? It will have a user, user who wants to um, browse through the collection of um, the images. Then we have a content delivery network. Content delivery network basically creates an edge location close to the user so the user does not have to make requests to a very far away remote server and that makes it very easy for the user to actually load the content, static content mostly like images very quickly. Uh, now the very fact that we have CDNs, you might wonder uh, if it's if it has any element of decentralization. Well, it does, uh, I'll, I'll be showing you in a while. So it, it does have CDNs, it does have S3 buckets. So buckets uh, like S3 bucket, Amazon S3 bucket, it helps you to store a lot of big dump of images in one place very easily. And it's uh, basically called as a media storage. So I'll just write that down here, media storage, very easy to store GIFs and images and all of those things. and here you have your content delivery network, CDNs, right? Now, the images that are getting populated here are going to be from your NFT creation service. So NFT creation service, 
uh, is a service that allows your users or your artists mostly to come and create their own NFTs which can be sold on this platform. So they will create their own artist profile and they will create start creating their own NFTs which they can start selling and whenever something is sold they are the people basically who get paid. Now uh, the NFTs that you create right they are part code and part image. The image part stays on the uh, IPFS which is also called as the uh, it's basically a or decentralized uh, image storage peer-to-peer -peer image storage it's IPFS which is the interplanetary file system so this is where the image basically gets stored so this is the element of distributedness or decentralization uh, in an NFT platform and most of the NFT platforms that you see right now are just using an IPFS system and that's it they're, they're not using anything else that's and they have completely centralized system everything else is completely centralized and these images uh, now IPFS uh, system is very notorious for uh, uh, you know it, it's high latency it's not a low latency platform it's high latency and the response times are very very slow so what you want to do is you want to uh, keep idly keep querying this ipfs and keep storing the data in media storage and from there in you want to uh, send the data to your cdns and that's how you want to serve your customers you don't want to your customers to be making requests to ipfs because that will lead to very bad um, user experience you don't want to do that so this is just being stored for uh, security and sub and you know openness because that's how nfts work basically you want you want to have complete transparency and decentralization um, to be able to even create nfts right because nfts are essentially erc70 tokens um, ideally on on uh, ethereum like about 80 90 percent of the nfts in the, in the in the market right now are uh, ethereum based and they're created on the uh, you know uh, erc70 token so this is how you serve these images, right? So that's the most important part that you need to understand in a distributed NFT marketplace. If you've understood this much till now, you're sorted, you know 70% of the game that's happening uh, in NFT marketplaces. Now, this makes it very easy for you to also create your own NFT marketplace, right? Because now you've understood that it's it's much easier than we think to develop this kind of a platform because earlier we were because you, you probably would have thought that there's a lot more going on, but it's not, there's not much going on in an NFT marketplace. So this uh, that I've created here is basically an, an event or a message stream, you can say, like mostly an event stream. Now, I've uh, in some of my previous sessions, I've told you that uh, event, message, and data streams kind of can be the same technologies, but you can configure them differently to handle different kind of data. And in this case, we're going to be using it for events, events because uh, let's say I have some collections and then there's some artist gets added and the, the images uh, will now be part of both the collection and the artist. So there need to be a lot of interactions between uh, the collection service and the artist service. Now, when I say service, these are all different microservices. Now, I've shown you only, only six, but uh, for example, this users authentication authorization, these are three, these could be three different microservices. I've just shown you one, micro, uh, one service here. And uh, so total, there could be so many more. So similarly here, purchases, orders, payments, they could be all separate uh, market, uh, all separate uh, microservices, but I've shown you just in one microservice cluster what, what it's going to look like. Right? Like, like I said, if you have less time, if you have like 15, 20 minutes to do a system design problem, you want to get to the basics, you want to do the essential parts, you don't want to get into uh, a very complex system designs. So um, like I said, so collections, you have a collections microservice, microservice, and what you can do here is we can create a database quickly to show that this uh, is going to basically have a schema of collections and it's going to have all the list of all the collections. Then you want to have the list of all the artists in your uh, database. Now artists are also users, right? So firstly, most importantly, the users will have two types. Users, users could be artists where they'll create an artist profile or they could be just a regular user, but it doesn't matter what user it is. They need to have their authentication and authorization, what kind of authorization they have. And artists microservice will have some extra things like, you know, they, their own uh, private collection of how many art pieces they have uh, created and what all art they've created till now, how much has been sold, all of that stuff, that complete dashboard that will be available to artists. So that's a lot of business logic there only for artists, but for ge general users, you just want to have uh, authentication authorization and just a user database, which will be mostly SQL database. This could be SQL as well, but collections could be uh, no SQL. And then you would want to have a wallet integration service. Now, this is where you, uh, don't just want wallet integration, which is like, you know, different types of meta wallets for XDC or uh, MetaMask for Ethereum and uh, True Wallet, whatever you want to integrate out here. But not just integration, but you also want to have uh, external 
facing. So we'll call it external facing because uh, any platform like this wants to be able to interact with so many different uh, platforms, right? So I'll just make this connection here, connection kind of thing, because your uh, platform, your NFT platform needs to be connected to so many different uh, other platforms. So for example, some could be a crypto exchange. You're connected to a crypto exchange or using oracles, you could be connected to different blockchains as well. Maybe you want to support only particular uh, currency of a particular blockchain. So you, you could be connected here uh, with a particular blockchain. And let me see if I can find a good, uh, actually I want to find a good uh, icon for Oracle. Oracles are basically technologies that enable you to bring in uh, things, bring in data from another blockchain, because it's not very easy to bring in data from another blockchain or bring in external data to into a blockchain. Both of these things can be done. Uh, so I'm trying to find uh, a good, good enough, a good enough uh, icon for a for an oracle. What it looks like. Uh, maybe this will suffice for now. So you want to have data coming in from an oracle. And it's actually coming from another blockchain. So for blockchain, Whimsical does have a good icon. Okay, so from blockchains, you want the data to come into Oracle. From Oracle, it'll go into your uh, external facing service. So this can have wallet integration, it can, can have blockchain integration or crypto exchange integration, any kind of stuff can be out here. Then we've all talked about our user authentication, blah, blah, blah. Then comes the most important part here, like or, or one of the most important parts, which is purchases, orders, payments. So once you uh, purchase an NFT, the token gets transferred to the user's wallet. That's what's happening here. And it's also removed from the platform because once you've purchased something, then NFTs are unique and they're non-fungible. So only you will own that NFT and this has to be then the, uh, the whole, uh, what do you call it, uh, entry or the data point on this website will have to be removed because that token has been purchased by a particular user. And this is what a distributed NFT marketplace looks like. So just more emphasis on distributed. I just want to highlight distributed, actually I'm not able to do that. But just some emphasis on just distributed and it's not decentralized, mind you. We will talk about decentralized NFT marketplaces in the future, but right now this is what almost everybody in the market is doing. They're building distributed NFT marketplaces. So I hope this video was helpful. We'll talk about distributed uh, crypto exchange platform in the next video. Do subscribe if you haven't. This is awesome content which you won't find on the internet anywhere. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.